You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options Gold, crude oil, corn, soybeans, and more. With so many tradable products, the futures options market can be an intimidating place. How can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Welcome to This Week in Futures Options, the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace. Each week, we'll break down the top trades, hot products, volatility explosions, and much more. Be sure to check out our live stream via the Mixler app. That's M-I-X-L-R. Or join our live chat room at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. Whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs, this week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This week in Futures Options is brought to you by Quick Strike Options Pricing and Analysis Software. Quick Strike offers powerful and flexible options analysis and pricing tools via an easy to use web based interface. View prices on outright options or spreads with comprehensive page level analysis controls. Build trades, manage risk, or explore historical volatility. Quick Strike has you covered with market data reports ranging from open interest to the term structure of volatility. Quick Strike is the perfect addition to your trading toolkit. Learn more about Quick Strike at bantix.com. That's B A N T I X.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Quick Strike One. That's Q U I K S T R I K E One. This Week in Futures Options is also brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world manage risks and seize opportunities. CME Group offers the deepest and most liquid options on futures across all asset classes, including interest rates, equity indexes, foreign exchange, energy, agriculture, and metals. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. This Week in Futures Options is also brought to you by FTSE Russell, a leading global provider of benchmarks, analytics, and data solutions. Investors in the U.S. and around the world are using FTSE Russell indexes to benchmark their investment performance and create investment funds, ETFs, structured products, and index-based derivatives. Many Options Insider Radio Network listeners will be familiar with the Russell 2000 Index. Russell 2000 Futures and Options are currently trading on the Chicago Board Options Exchange and CME Group. Group. For more information, please visit FTSERussell.com, CBOE.com, and CMEGroup.com. And now, get ready to break down the latest futures options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. All right, everybody. That music means it's time to get funky. It's time to get fun. It's time to talk some futures options with Twifo. My name is Mark Longo from the optionsinsider.com, the brand new optionsinsider.com. Hope you guys have had a chance to check out the brand spanking new addition to the family out there. You know, you have to, you have to upgrade the sites every few years, and it was time for us. Uh, so we've added a whole bunch of new stuff. Hope you guys check it out. Make sure, you know, whenever we add one thing, we ought 10 things always break behind the scenes, so if something's not working, let us know. We're, we're figuring out all the bugs for ourselves, but hopefully you guys have found everything you like and everything you see up there. You like the new format, like the new display for the shows, the articles, all that good stuff. Uh, let us know if you have something else. And there's more features coming online as we speak. We're still tweaking it, so uh, stay tuned for good stuff. Theoptionsinsider.com, the place to go for all that goodness. It's not just shows here. It's a lot of shows, but it's not just shows. 
And if you want to just get shows, you can always all get them all there as well, including our live stuff going to be integrated better into the website going forward so you can see when we're live, what we're doing, how to listen to it, all that fun stuff. It's really cool. I've been working on it for a while. I've been promising it for since the beginning of the year, so it's finally here. Kick the tires and light the fires. Let us know what you think. All right, let's get into it. It's one of those weeks where everybody's hither and yon. I don't even know what time zone Sean is in uh, over there from Footsie Russell, but he's not in this one. Uh, usually, he's, if he's here, he's sitting next to me, holding down the court with some uh, delicious burgers. Our buddy Nick over there, uh, I don't know where he is either in terms of time zones. Everyone's hither and yon, traveling, moving and shaking, a lot of things lighting it up out here. So I'm holding down the Twifo hot seat by myself. I am in the CME group hot seat this week, and it's very uncomfortable. Very Iron Throne-ish. Uh, it, I almost said a spoiler there, but I won't. <laughs> Instead, let's keep on rolling. Uh, you guys are keep pestering me about what I think about uh, Game of Thrones. Maybe we'll get to that a little bit later. But let's get into the fun stuff right now in terms of what's lighting it up in the world of futures. Out. Indeed, what's lighting it up in the world of, of derivatives? You know, We give a lot of insight into what OCC does every month, but we don't get a chance to do that as often on the futures options side of the fence. And things have been active of late over there. On the 14th, so just a couple days ago, see me announcing... Uh, they hit a new OI record, 138.2 million contracts. Of course, that's across all of their complexes out there. But still, that's a ton of open interest. It just passes by the previous record of 138 and about a half million contracts that was set on March 15th of last year. Uh, so it's been over a year since a new OI record has come into fruition. So it's been a while. It might surprise people considering how active 2018 was that we didn't set more records that year, but uh, we did not. And it didn't come either in uh, the tumult of the February 5th and that near meltdown. It was later on, March 15th. So uh, interesting timing from that perspective. Uh, overall, OI grown about 20% since just the end of last year. So it's the end of 2018. So that's a big pop uh, with the one seeing the biggest gains out here in terms of overall complexes. Rates. Go figure. Rates lighten it up these days. Not, not surprising. 26% OI increase there. AGs up 23%. So the trade war not damping down uh, the volume out there. Uh, equities up 17%. Metals 15%. And FX bringing up the rear with a paltry 6%. Let's look at some uh, individual products, see what's lighting it up out there in terms of single day records. Uh, also on May 14th, May 14th, obviously, uh, an active day out there. Uh, the long-term Treasury futures uh, reached a uh, new OI record of about about one and a quarter billion. Or, excuse me, million. <laughs> that would be a lot of billion. One and a quarter million uh, contracts out there. Uh, the ultra tenure hitting about seven hundred sixty-five thousand contracts OI. Good old, old buddies, Lean Hogs, aka Hog Love, also lighting it up. Uh, it's pretty strong OI. Four hundred twenty-eight thousand contracts for Lean Hog option. Maybe I'll do some Hog Love on the show today. And uh, Brent. Brent crude oil futures, OI record, 234,000 contracts. Speaking of crude oil, let's get into the sticky stuff, the Texas tea. You guys can follow along, as always, cmegroup.com slash twifo. That's where you get the uh, the kind of basic free version if you want to upgrade to the uh, the high-tier stuff, quickstrike.netbantics.com, other places to go there. Once you're logged in, people ask us, how do I see what you guys see? Uh, head on over to the top tab there. You see quick reports. Click on that. You'll see a bunch of different reports in there, including the TWIFO report. Click on that, and then you'll see exactly what we're seeing here on the program. If you did that right now for WTI, you would see that it has been a bit of a boost here for the week. We're up nearly 2%, 62, almost 63 out there in WTI uh, right now. It's interesting kind of seeing what's going on, what's driving, uh, driving price action out there. Because, of course, we had a gain in crude inventories. The market kind of said, eh, yeah, they don't really care about that. Uh, also, uh, Middle East is kind of where uh, every time there's tensions in the Middle East and the data ends in Y, guess what? There's probably tensions in the Middle East, but we're ratcheting it up now with our saber rattling back and forth with Iran. That, of course, causing a little bit of tension in the Middle East. That, of course, giving a little bit of lift to uh, what's going on uh, out there. Excuse me, what's going on out there in the, in the crude marketplace uh, so that's been, uh, yeah, we're seeing, we're ferrying staff out of our embassy in Baghdad, all of our concerns there as well. So all of that kind of ratcheting up concerns there a little bit. Of course, you know, the downside was the continued exacerbated trade war between us and China. That of course is the demand side of the equation, but people are seeing maybe supply side outweighing the demand side at this 
point with the potential tensions in the Middle East, what's going on in Venezuela and others. Uh, there's still some lingering uncertainty over, uh, over OPEC, how much their supply they're willing to put in to offset some of these uh, production losses, all of that making supply the chief concern now rather than demand. So that's actually trumping what's going on, pun intended, <laughs> with uh, the trade war and China. So let's see what all this has wrought here in the uh, WTI options space. We're seeing vol uh, coming off yet again, off pretty substantially, off nearly two handles, uh, pretty much across the board here in the term structure of uh, the CME WTI months here. There we go. That's a little better. All right. Let me get to that. Perfect. Love the old dark mode, listeners. Uh, but off uh, multiple handles here in a lot of the months here. Let's see where the action was out here from an overall volume perspective. By the way, OI, uh, not, a, not a huge week on OI. We were just talking OI earlier, up about 3% this week. That's kind of about an average a week out here. Let's see where the volume was concentrated. If you want to say a little bit farther out, maybe in June or something like that, no. Uh, the answer was actually, you know, or SEP, you think it may be SEP a little bit farther out, or even, you know it's not going to be in the weeklies. And uh, I kind of misled you there earlier. Actually, it looks like it was in June. That's a large print there. Of We saw the 62, almost 63 is where we're coming into showtime here. It's the 60 puts yet again, you know, that even money uh, type uh, type type uh, product uh, keeps uh, lighting it up. 60 puts doing, I think they just went off the tape now, so I can't even get an exact. They have, it looks like they have uh, now gone the way of the dodo. They were expiring momentarily. And uh, so, yeah, 27,000 of those uh, front June puts there uh, lighting it up. And, yeah, I can't, I can't recall that because they have gone the way of the dodo. But 27,300 over the top of the week, that was the big print out here by a country mile. And then we get on out to good old July, 65 calls. So it wasn't all puts all the time. The July calls were also lighting it up to the tune of far less, 12,000 of those uh, lighting up. The Looks like pretty much evenly throughout the week, uh, 3,500 on Wednesday, about 3,000 on Tuesday, actually 4,500 on Monday. So uh, today was the laggard, only about 1,900. So it wasn't all downside listeners. There was some upside love there as well, 65 calls uh, taking it out there in July. Let's look here at uh, the SKU really quickly. I can't look at the SKU in an expired contract because it's expired A and B. It's it's all crazy gamma. So let's go out here to, uh, let's go out here back to July and check on it for ourselves. Uh, yeah, interesting what's going on out here. You know, a week ago we saw the puts were where the action was. The puts were 5.2% rich uh, to the at the money. Coming into this week, the puts are morbid. 11.2% rich to the at the money. Also seeing the calls getting cheaper. The calls were about 2.1% cheap to the at the money. Now this week coming in, they're 6.1% cheap uh, to the at the money. So the calls have come in. The puts have come up. That's kind of what you expect to see as you're sliding up that uh, skew curve. There you're going to see a little bit of a rotation around the at the money axis there. And that's pretty much what we saw. Uh, so going to the upside, that explains also why the ball's coming in as heavily as it is because uh, the calls are cheap and getting cheaper. Uh, so maybe if you are an upside fan, maybe this is an interesting opportunity for some cheap calls. And if you're not, if you're looking to hedge, unfortunately, got a little bit pricier out there. Maybe you want to look at some verticals and some spreads lighting it up out there as well. So that's our old friend, the Texas T. Uh, let's keep on rolling. Again, if you want to switch products, listeners, just go to that drop down there. And you're going to follow along with me. We're going to go to equities. In particular, let's start in the land of Russell 2000. You know, if you've been watching the equity space, <clears throat> excuse me, or listening to any of our shows over the past week, the option block volatility views, et cetera, and so on and so forth, you know that uh, equity vol kind of came and then it kind of went. Trade war premium, I think, uh, I think to call it fleeting would be charitable. It came and it went, and at least so far, it's not coming back. Uh, coming into showtime, at least, we're seeing the VIX about five handles lower than where it was this time last week. We were north of the 20 handle. Now we're at about a 15 handle. Uh, we're seeing the same thing in RVX. That was about a 24. Now we're at about an 18. Uh, so that's off about six handles. Uh, we're seeing that spread actually widening a little bit. VIX coming off, uh, you know, actual RVX coming off a little bit more uh, than VIX, I should say, at this point. So about 3.3 handles. Uh, so widened out nearly a full handle from where it was this time 
uh, last week. And before we get into what's lighting it up, we had Tim on last week, Tim McCourt uh, from the CME Equity Complex. So he was talking about those micros and what's lighting it up are the freaking micros. Those things are clearly you guys like yourself some micro. I guess you've been waiting for, you know, uh, the micro S&P, the micro NASDAQ, the micro Russell to really sink your teeth into them because the futures are are just uh, blowing the doors off. CME has admitted this is their most popular new product I think that they've ever launched. Uh, 2.6 million contracts traded just in the first five days. So remember, we were well less than that, well shy of that on our last show. We had about 300,000 contracts coming into the first couple of days. Now we're at 2.6 million. So clearly... These things are resonating with you. The next step is going to have to be the options. I remember I asked, I put this to Tim last week, that <laughs> if the perhaps unanticipated degree of success of these products will accelerate that adoption of the options. Yeah, he kind of hedged a little bit on it, but I think that's probably what we're going to see. These things are lighting it up. Options on that makes a heck of a lot of sense. Of course, they are fungible with the big products as well. You have to kind of just know your ratios out there. These are one-tenth size contracts. And then you'll be good to go in terms of us lighting it up out here. And let's look at the Russell 2000 options. What the big action out here we're at. We're off about 14, nearly 15 handles. So right around 1% here. Net on the week, we're at about 15.64 right now in the Russell 2000. And it looks like longer term downside, SEP 1400 puts is what's leading the dance out here this week. Trading a couple of times on Monday and on Wednesday. Uh, all of that actually closing. So it looks like someone perhaps uh, deciding uh, against uh, keeping some of that that uh, protection on. Maybe they were trying to harvest a little bit of the old risk premium with some out of the money puts, deciding discretion is the better part of valor. Either way, they're closing out the 1,400 puts, and that was the big trade of the week out here. Let's go out to the E-mini S&P, see if that is following along as well. And what's going on out here in e mini land? Remember, listeners, I like to choose the select all when I'm doing this. Nick gets mad at me for it all the time whenever I do that. He says it's too much. It is too much sometimes. It can be overwhelming amount of data. But again, I'm doing a show. I need to see all of it at a glance. And that's what the select all allows you to do. But I could see, I can certainly agree with people out there who think it's it's too much of a good thing. All right, and let's go out here in the E mini. We're at about twenty eight eighty seven right here, so kind of unched on the week. It's a little bit of a tale of two cities out here. Uh, small caps taken on the chin. Uh, the E mini actually looking uh, pretty pretty decent right now on the week, and we're at about twenty eight eighty seven. It is the twenty six hundred puts. So downside out here, and where are we out here in June? That is leading the dance by a small margin at the front week, spiring in a day twenty seven half puts. Only about a thousand contracts behind it, but we saw thirty-three thousand, almost thirty-four thousand of these June twenty, excuse me, twenty-six hundred puts leading the dance, and they were trading pretty much all week. Uh, Ten thousand on Monday, sixteen, almost seventeen thousand on Tuesday, and a little lighter, four thousand on Wednesday, only three thousand today. And the lion's share that actually closing yet again. So closing out of the money puts here seems to be the narrative, the trend du jour, at least out here in the equity options. I won't spend too much time breaking down the skew because it doesn't change as much out here in the equity space as we see it doing in some of the commodities and other products. Uh, and Vol, as I mentioned already, kind of uh, has been annihilated, but still not nowhere near off as far as it has been over the course of, let's say, what we saw, you know, uh, the upside that we saw a week ago, we're certainly lower <laughs> than that. All right, let's keep on rolling out of here in the equities. Let's see, where do we want to land next? Let's let's land, oh, uh, why not? Let's go to metals. Uh, Nick's not here. He likes himself some gold. Uh, let's talk some gold. We talked copper last week and how copper is uh, a surprising uh, surprising benefactor of all this uh, trade war concern. You think, you know, Chinese demand is the big driver of action out there in copper when there's not as much of it. Uh, maybe you might see a little bit of tailing off of that volume, but that's not exactly we've seen the opposite. We talked about record volumes out there in copper. Let's see what we have going on in gold this week. You know, we flirted ever so briefly with that 1300 level, and now we're back to 1286 out here, at least on the week. Uh, people have been watching, waiting, hoping, can we break that 1300 level? Can we rally north of it? That's kind of seems where a lot of the the mental mental action and mind share is, is centered around gold these days. This week, not so much. Kind of only slightly unched net on the week, off about a handle. Again, 1286 or so. 
out here in gold. The vol, also a bit of a mixed bag, nearer portion of the curve, kind of a coming off longer term portion of the curve. Slightly, and I say ever so slightly bid, not a ton of, uh, of action out there. Let's see where the big action for the week was. It was in July. July upside, July 1340s, leading the dance, 6,400 of those. Uh, bringing the pain here this week. Pretty even throughout the week, about 3,000, uh, 2,700 or so on Monday, then about 1,600 on Tuesday, 1,300 on Wednesday. Light today, only 600. So heavier towards the beginning of the week and then kind of even throughout the rest of the week. Uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of that opening, thirty over half of that opening. So opening upside here in July in gold, which is kind of interesting. The bugs out there in force. Also worth noting, looks like at least on Monday there was similar sized paper in the 1380s and the 1380s, both doing a little bit more than 2,000, about 2,500 and 2,300 respectively. So maybe a bit of a vertical. I would think the 1340, 1380 lines up a little bit better than whatever that 1330 is. Unless it, maybe they did a 1330, 1340 with that 1380 kicker. If they did that, they would probably would be on a ratio for the latter, and we're not seeing that. So we see similar paper on Monday for those strikes. I'll have to, I haven't had a chance to dig into the blocks to see or if anything was put up uh, as a funky spread. Looks like it may be a 40-80 vertical, which would make a little more sense in just the 40s uh, outright there. All right, let's see what's going on. Gold's always one of the more interesting ones from a skew perspective, listeners, because it, it changes, it moves, it evolves from week to week. And let's see what kind of evolution. Now that I say that, I, of course, have jinxed myself because we didn't see a huge amount of evolution out here in the gold skew. I'm looking out here in July. That was the most active month this week. Uh, the puts, at least, kind of remained about where they were, about right around. They were about 4% cheap at the money. Now they're a little bit more bid, about 3.7% cheap at the money, but still not a huge move. Uh, the calls did move, though. The calls are where the action is right now in gold, as you might imagine, by the 1340s leading the dance this week. You're going to see some changes in uh, the July skew as a result. And that's exactly what we saw. They were about 7.5% rich to the at the money, now nearly 9%, 8.7% rich. So calls catching a bid. Maybe that's a sign. Maybe. I use that term cautiously. Maybe that's a sign that the warm is turning. Maybe it just reflects that little bit of paper we saw there. Uh, either way, uh, calls getting a little bit more love. That's why, go that's why the metals are kind of fun is because every week's a different story out there and uh, it makes it a little bit more exciting <laughs> to uh, to keep an eye on some of these things versus you know how much are the puts bid in the equities versus the calls kind of thing it's not usually a huge area of uh, a lot of action a lot of movement a lot of fun out there we had a lot we put out to you guys before the show too what did you want us to talk about on the show? Uh, we've got a little bit of love here for some ags. So I'm just going to go out here. Let's go, to, let's go to the beans. Haven't checked in on our friends the beans in a little bit and see what's lighting it up in the land of the most magical of fruit. Uh, here we go. All right, soybeans again. Click on that drop down. Click on ags. Click on soybeans. You could follow along with the home team here. Listen, it's a good week for beans from an OI perspective, up 6%. Uh, that's pretty healthy uh, for the beans. We're at 840.75 coming into showtime, so that 840 strike up nearly 4%, 31 and a half handles. That's a, that's a good run <laughs> in the beans here uh, this week. So maybe looks like rumors of uh, lessening of, uh, of the tensions between us and China. Remember, the beans are... Kind of ground zero for the trade war. Whenever you look at the impact of the trade war, you got to start with the beans. China was their biggest uh, customer. They went to zero net imports for a while there from U.S. beans as a result of this trade war. So any impasse, certainly any sort of progress, certainly going to be seen as a welcome sign. That seems to be the case. 30 handle rally this week out here. And the beans of all also up. Not surprising. People always think because they're biased because of equities. Downside equates to vol, but movement in any direction is vol at the end of the day. Listen, it's not all about downside. So you're up 30 handles, nearly 4%. Yeah, that's vol. And it's coming into all of the months. Not a huge spike in vol, but a decent lift across the board. Seems like the biggest spike uh, coming out here. It looks like in, where are we here? Looks like maybe June. Yeah, June getting the biggest lift here. And uh, a few, yeah, looks like, yeah, middle to... Middle portion of the curve is kind of where we're seeing uh, the decent amount. We got some coming out, going away, you know, this week, but that doesn't count as well, at least not to me. All right, let's go out here a little bit farther 
out here to see what lit up the tape in terms of action this week. And I said we were at an 840 on the beans there for that front month contract, and it was 860 calls uh, going out <laughs> going out next week pretty much uh, that are where the action. I take that back, actually, a little bit farther out. This is why I have to hit select all listeners. You can see all of it. It's kind of a tie, close dance here, but the winner is going to be actually the 800 puts, those par puts in July. That's an active strike pretty much in July. And in, where are we here? In November as well. So July and November, 800 puts, a very active. They just start with July, Twenty, almost 21,000 of those are going up this week for our number one with a bullet. A pretty active all week, 6,000 on Monday, almost 6,000 on Tuesday, over 6,000 on Wednesday, and about 3,000 today. So, and actually a lot of that closing. So maybe a similar narrative to what we saw in the equities of maybe closing out a little bit of near-term Uh, downside protection here now that we've rallied through that. Maybe concerns are alleviated that we're going to break that. Maybe they had some uh, line in the sand. They had written in some puts at that strike. Either way, deciding to get the heck out of Dodge. That's the biggest trade by far. But then we go out to the November 800 puts. They are a fairly close number, two or 15,000 and change going out out there as well. And the big trade coming on Monday, nearly 6,000. And then Wednesday with about 5,000 going up. Uh, Net on the week also closing, only a little bit less, though. Only about 1,700 of that closing. So back and forth on the 800 put strike in both months, biased towards the closing. Interesting. That's kind of, you know, now that we've been watching some of these products for a little bit, you get to have a little bit more of a sense of their flow. And it does seem like a lot of them do like to aggregate around those even money levels. We see it with the 60 handle. In WTI, we see it with 1,300 in crude. We see it now with 800 and 900, those levels in the soybeans. That works for a lot of asset classes, but a couple of these commodities tend to do it even more aggressively. And these are a few of them. Let's go beyond the 800 puts, see what else was lighting up the tape out here. I want you to get beyond that. 860 calls, again, going out next week, nearly nearly 10,000, 9,000 and change. Uh, were the big actor after that with the big trade coming on Wednesday, excuse me, Tuesday, 3,600 and about 2,500 on Wednesday, nearly 3,000 today. Uh, Slightly biased towards the opening, so 860s looks like a lot of back and forth. Again, not surprising as we've raced toward that strike with only a week to go. Uh, Kind of interesting to see a lot of near-dated paper going up in in the ags, which usually has a little bit more of a little bit more of a longer-term cycle uh, to it going around the, you know, the new crop, old crop rotation. Interesting stuff afoot. Let's let's scan really quickly to see if we can see any other funky surprises lurking out here in the in the soybeans. Don't see a ton of them. Let me get back here to the quick report so we could do our old mover and shaker update our reports. If you guys want to follow along with that, again, go back to the quick reports tab, kick the scanner, set the date settings for this week. And you can do exactly what we're doing right now. Again, this is purely based on underlying. What is moving, rocking, and rolling over there at CME this week? No OI change, no vol, nothing like that. Just straight up underlying futures movement. Uh, let's go from the bottom to the top. Number five on the bottom there, the worst, I should say number one really, on the, the, worst, the worst mover, worst loser of the week is lumber, off nearly 9%, followed by, uh, by we got uh, platinum right behind it, off 2%. Then we've got uh, the pound USD off about one and three quarters percent and silver, our old friend silver, one and point six percent. And then rounding out the top five to the to the bottom there, we've got uh, the Aussie dollar USD off nearly one and a half percent. So a little bit of FX in there. Maybe we'll get to some FX. I haven't had a lot of inquiries about FX from you guys lately. It hasn't been a lot going on in FX, so we haven't rotated onto the program in a little bit. But let us know if you have a. Uh, any inkling in FX, and maybe maybe we can accommodate you guys. All right, let's start now. The uh, the bottom, number five of the top five there in terms of of upside here. We've got soybean meal up 4.5%, and that's number five. Number four, oats up 5%. Then we've got KC wheat. Man, it's all eggs all the time. Good thing we stuck to check down on some eggs. Up five and a third percent. Number uh, numero dos here, corn. Up 7.5%, and wheat's number one, nearly 9% to the upside. So nearly 9% to the upside for wheat, nearly 9% to the downside 
for lumber. Hopefully, we'll get more upside than downside as we keep on rolling into your questions. It is time for your futures options feedback. It's time for your questions, comments, and insights. It's time for futures options feedback. Submit your questions at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, stocktwits.com slash options insider, or via questions at the options You can also submit your feedback via our Options Insider Radio Network mobile app, available for iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. You can even ask your questions live every Friday at 3 p.m. Central via our Mixler chat room. So grab the Mixler app or just search for Options Insider at Mixler.com. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com. All right, welcome to your feedback. You guys have a bunch of it. Everyone, everyone wants to uh, get me to opine on Game of Thrones. I'll just do it quickly, I guess, from bot to bot. I'll pick this one from B-O-T-B, maybe bot B. Wants to know, what do you think of Game of Thrones this season? Are you feeling the hate like everyone else? Uh, no, no, I think that's safe to say. I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I think, I think I'm in the middle maybe. I'm not super loving it, but uh, I'm not awash. People out there are posting petitions to redo the season that, like that makes any sense, and no, I'm not in that camp. I think I think you can label any criticism at it. It's, it's that it clearly was rushed. They had to put a lot into six episodes, and so things are going to get left by the wayside or maybe not given the attention they deserve. And that's certainly a fair criticism. Some of the other criticisms we're seeing are going a lot beyond it into other areas, other realms that have nothing to do with the actual quality of the material itself. And I'm not going down that road. Uh, but in general, it's all right. I'm enjoying it, but. Uh, <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah, they, they could have done with a few more episodes, I think, to, to give the characters the send-off they deserve. All right. Uh, Doser? Dose? Dose R? Let's go with Doser. Sounds fun. Doser wants to know, how tasty is that CME bacon? Yeah, you know, <laughs> in terms of announcements, uh, this one seems to, to have caught your imagination. Everyone's liking it, retweeting it, sending it to us. You see this? Uh, yeah, we saw it. Uh, <laughs> if you missed it, listeners. Uh, we'll catch you up. CME announced a new fresh bacon index recently uh, to, uh, as they term it, track supply and demand dynamics of bacon transacted on the cash market. We've always talked about our hashtag hog love here on the show. I guess we'll have to add hashtag bacon love because really who the heck doesn't love bacon? Now, it's worth noting, if you dig into this a little bit, it is not a tradable product in and of itself at least not yet usually when they launch these indices it's kind of a bit of a test a feeler a feeler and if there's interest if people really like it maybe they will launch probably a future first and then who knows an option on bacon that'd be pretty cool uh but let's see here this is uh coming may 13th so it already launched uh the tracking the price of fresh bellies used to produce bacon uh so that's what the that's kind of what the origins are. they call it the fresh bacon index uh, it's calculates the price of one load, so 40,000 pounds worth, if you guys are not familiar with the contract specs out there, of fresh bellies in cents per pound. Uh, let's see. Um, it's a weighted, weekly weighted average of the prices for fresh bellies in the weight categories of 7 to 9, 9 to 13, 13 to 17, and 17 to 19 pounds. Uh, so that's what it is. If you want to get yourself a taste of that tasty, tasty bacon, it's, it's actually live now. You can keep an eye on it and track it for yourselves. Uh, it's it's a product that clearly has a lot of resonance with people, just the, the hogs in general. People hit us up about it, and uh, we joke about it with our hashtags, but there is some interest. It's one of the more esoteric product categories, and you guys seem fascinated by it. And certainly certainly the bacon <laughs> the bacon index is, is not going to hurt that fascination. I, I tip my cap uh, to the CME social folks. It seemed like they had, they had some fun with this one uh, out there. And how, how can you not? It's a bacon index. All right, then... These handles are mouthfuls this week. Den, denanans, den, denanase, denanase, denanase. Let's go with denanase. One syllable too many in there, maybe. Denanase wants to know, what's the difference between realized and historical volatility? Uh, short answer, nothing. Uh, long answer, nothing. <laughs> uh, realized is, of course, the amount of volatility that the marketplace has actually exhibited over some period of time. And uh, historical you can the tombs are the two terms are, 
or su you can substitute them one for the other. So you can look at a chart of the, of the volatility over a certain historical period. That is historical volatility. It's also what the market has realized over that time. So the two terms can be used interchangeably. So uh, yeah, short answer, nothing. So feel free. Don't get confused if you see realized or historical quoted interchangeably. They are the same thing. All right. Uh, what we got here? Tank. That's an easy one. Tank wants to know. Uh, people have this one on the brain, too, lately. Will we see ETH futures anytime soon? Also, how are the ag options shaping up here? Well, we just did the latter, at least for the beans. So hopefully that, uh, that satiates you there, Mr. Tank. I guess we could we could do a lot of the show here on some other ag products. You guys, do, okay, tell you what. Well, we just did uh, the beans. Let's do real quick. We'll do one more hit because the ags are lighting it up. And you guys do seem to like yourself some ags out here as well. We don't get a chance to talk them that much. We'll do a quick hit. Let's pick another one out there. Let's, let's just do corn really quickly. All right, so let's go out here again. Same deal, listeners. Go to the drop down. Go to agriculture, which is right at the top there. Grains and oil seeds, you'll see it there. And then corn, right at the top of that list. Click on that, and bam, you're off to the races. If you want to be a crazy person like me, you hit select all, and then you're good to go out there. Corn coming in, 379.75, so almost 378. Also, like I said before, moving and shaking this week, up nearly 8% or 28 handles. So we're looking at around that 380 strike for the at the money. Where was the action this week? This is another reason why you got to have the, uh, the select all open. There's decent paper out as far as decent and dece, pun intended, but a little bit closer to home is where the number one print appears to be congregated here. It was in July, the July 400. So yet again, even money paper aggregating around that even money strike here. Nearly 40,000 contracts going up uh, pretty even, except for Monday. Light on Monday, 1,200 contracts, then 10x that the rest of the week. 12,000, uh, almost 13,000 on Tuesday. 12,000 and change on Wednesday. 12,000 and change today. Uh, so it was a fairly active, <laughs> even amounts of contracts printing on this even money strike throughout the week. A total of nearly 40,000 contracts. Interestingly enough, only about 1,400 of that opening. So a lot of back and forth churning on that strike looks like 380s are active too those are at the monies on tuesday so maybe a vertical going up 380 400 on tuesday similar volume both days right around exactly 13,000 contracts and then actually the 380s will be our number two for the week with about 34,000 going up of those again at the money calls now so not surprising those would be leading the dance those are a little bit more biased towards the opening about 4,000 open but again a lot of churn and burn on that strike. 13,000 was a big day on Tuesday, about 5,000 on Monday, 8,000 each yesterday and today. Let's see. Then we drop off a little bit and we go out to the 380s. Also, in uh, these are in June with doing about 25, 26,000 of those. Uh, these are going away sooner. These are a little bit more than a week, about eight days left of these bad boys here. Let's see how the, how the vol, like we mentioned, the vol is up. You're going to have a 30, close to 30 handle move. You're going to have some vol. And that's exactly what we saw here. Up strong, up size, up near portion of the curve, all that gamma, up multiple handles. But even pretty much farther out, you're getting out to July and beyond, where I would assume some cooler heads are prevailing. Still up nearly five handles in July from a vol perspective. So a big move out there. Let's look at July as well, because that's also where our most active contract was. Let's look at the July skew. See how it changed a bit this week. The puts are, looks like a little bit cheaper. They're about nearly 9% cheap versus 6.6% .6 last week. So a little bit of air coming out of the puts there. And the calls also coming in a little bit, which is interesting. Uh, they were nearly 10% rich to the at the money, now 6%, about 5.7%. So that, they came off about four points, and the puts came in about uh, two points. That's kind of interesting. You usually see the vol going up. You don't see the air getting taken out of the wings that aggressively. I'm guessing looks like the, the wings must have had a lot of juice in them. We were waiting, I guess, for this trade war. People were pricing in both the calls and the puts pretty aggressively. And now that we saw this, uh, maybe, maybe some of the trade war stuff progressing, uh, looks like some of the air being taken out of the farther wings of the skew curve here. That's, that's interesting. Usually you see a big move to the upside of this. You see some developments like we saw in some of the other products. You see the calls come in. You see the puts get bid. Uh, we didn't really see that. We saw both of them coming in, which is uh, interesting. Interesting stuff out here. So there you go. Uh, who was that? Tank 
We could probably talk ags for many hours. Uh, but there you go. You got two ags on the show today. So hopefully that pleases you guys uh, out there in the land known as, let's just call you the Twifo Legion. There it is. There it is. There's my music. All right, listeners, uh, kind of uh, bringing it to a close here. We sometimes aim for around 40-odd minutes, 45 on this show. Uh, sometimes we go an hour when things are just hot and heavy out here. Uh, but we've got to keep on rolling with the network and, indeed, a lot of other things going on here. Kicking the can. And I've been talking for a lot, a lot of the day already, listeners. So i got to keep what le- what's left of my throat alive. Hope you guys have been enjoying the slew of the content. If you've listened to the network at all recently, you know I've been talking a lot lately. Dozens upon dozens of interviews and conversations hit the network on top of all the exclusive panel audio from the Swan Conference, from OIC. Got great audio coming at you from the Trading Show Chicago. So you guys can't hit the conferences. Don't worry. We're doing it for you. So hope you guys are enjoying that as well. And since they can't come here and do it themselves, I'll do it for them. Make sure if you haven't done so already, quickstrike.net, Q-U-I-K-S-T-R-I-K-E.net is the place to go. Kick the tires and light the fires over there uh, for Nick and his crew on Quick Strike. Seriously, if you're trading this stuff, if you like this stuff, if you even have a passing interest in this stuff, and you're listening to this show, you should, uh, then you got to be using this platform. At least try the free version, cmgroup.com slash twifo. And then upgrade from there once you get a use case in for how you're going to trade these products. And, of course, he's off hither and yon. Make sure you check out what's going on from FTSE Russell. A lot of great data fact i don't think i even had a chance to get to it here on this show today for what's going on with the russell and you know what we'll get to that next week about how the russell is performing versus a variety of the other indices uh i mentioned it today the big movement's going on out there so russell 2000 small caps performing interestingly in this largely macro driven environment uh, we'll get to all of that in a little bit. FTSE Russell, F-T-S-E Russell.com is the place to go. Give me a follow on Twitter while you're at it as well, at FTSE Russell. And of course, CME, you know how to find them. Uh, great research coming out. Eric and his team and Blue over there really doing a lot of great. Eric had a great one on equity schemes recently, so we'll have to get him onto the show to discuss that. Uh, what surprises or perhaps lack thereof lurks out there in the skew in these equity products. Fascinating stuff. If you're trading this stuff, you listen to the show like this, you like stuff, a little bit of skew. Uh, check that one out, cmegroup.com. They usually put uh, Eric and Blue stuff front and center on the homepage. It makes it easy to find. Of course, you click around, you can find this podcast there as well. So uh, if you're listening to it there, welcome. We love you guys. And on behalf of myself and Nick and Sean and our friends at CME, I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, subscribing, for sending in questions, for listening live, for all the fun stuff that you do, for asking about Game of Thrones, everything else you got on the brain. We love you all. And we'll see you back here next week for more of This Week in Futures Options. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com.